great. We'd love to wrap the other club. <laughs> she always comes back here. Great. <laughs> I do. You know, I, I swarm elsewhere. No, I say sure. swarm. <laughs> but I'll never abscond, I promise. There we go. Okay. You want all the lights off? Uh, I want the lights off. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm hoping this is not going to be as boring for you as you might think, or as it sounds, because it's actually kind of a cool topic. Oh my god, where are the arrows? I can't see them. There they are. Just press the space bar. There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> some of you may feel this way. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to want to chase a ball or take a nap instead, but that's what, you know, my dog wants to do with his, uh, his nephew. Okay, so. So Indiana Bones there is my dog, and uh, and oh, oh, actually that's Dexter. That's Dexter. It's still his nephew. <laughs> Dexter weighs about a hundred and twenty pounds. He's a big boy. Big hey, young. And that's his owner, my daughter, Kira. Um, so. <laughs> It's a pain in the neck, right? You've got to keep records, you've got to write things down, keep track of things. You know, it's, isn't it so much easier and nicer to just go out and like light your smoker and go in your eyes and, and you know, check things out and, and then go back home and have a beer, you know, or, or, or whatever. So, but I'm hoping I can give you some reasons not to do that. Um, so why? Why should you? take notes? Why should you keep any kind of record? Um, if you're new to bees, Fred, yeah. <laughs> if you're new to bees, yeah. okay, you haven't keeping, kept bees very long, it's a great learning tool. You write down what you've observed and what you're seeing, and then you can make correlations, okay? Things happen, and you can go back and look in your notes and say, oh, wow, did they swarm? What day did they swarm? Because, and when should I be seeing a queen now? Um, you know, is it too early? So it's it's a learning tool, especially if you're new to bees. Um, I would be lost without my bee book. Absolutely lost. It's it's critical for experienced beekeepers um, as a management tool. I put the book in the back of my truck coming back from an apiary one time, and I put it on top of a super. It fell out of the truck onto the road. I was like, I, I can't even tell you how upset I was. I posted on Facebook in a local mom's, Montville mom's group, has anybody seen this book? And would you believe it? Somebody actually found it by the <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> Messaged me and brought it over to my honey house and restored the book to me. So I was Believe me, that, that gal got a, a nice big jar of honey as a thank you. Um, what works and what doesn't work? Okay, so this year I've had a really difficult time controlling mites. I think part of the problem was I used Apple Guard in September, and I think the weather was a little too cool for it to be effective enough. Um, so going back and looking at that and looking at my mite counts after the Apigard treatment, I'm <coughs> rethinking <coughs> what the timing of that particular treatment <coughs> to be earlier in the season, probably right after pulling honey, and then before the pro in September. Um, aid to diagnosing diseases. Uh, nosema is one. We, I, nosema used to be talked about a lot more than it is now. Um, I think our bees have figured out how to how to get along in spite of nosema. It's still in there. There are still high levels in there every time we test, um, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the colonies. However, back when it actually did affect the bees, I found that bees weren't eating, and everything seemed right. You know, the, the brood patterns looked fine, didn't look like there was anything wrong with the queens, but the colonies weren't growing. So I would know how many frames of bees there were at a particular time. I'd come back a month later, there were still the same number of frames of bees. Okay, nothing had changed. And they weren't taking in food. That's nosema. 
Okay, those are some of the things that you'll observe. And if you didn't write down what you were seeing, you'd never know it. Um, and then there's data reporting, okay. So the USDA knows about me, and every quarter they send me a colony loss survey. They probably do it to you too, Grant, right? You have to I fill them. Right <laughs> <laughs> I actually <laughs> fill them out. The less they know about you, the better. Uh, well, I fill them out. I tell them, okay. you know. And look, but I have like, I have clients Apiary owners who get farmland assessment because of my bees. What and is VIP, by the way? VIP is a uh, um, bee-informed bee partnership, which is now defunct. Oh. Okay. Um, but um, you know, I need accurate records in order to tell the tax assessor how much income was made from honey for a particular apiary. So it is important. It's it's. Believe it or not, it is a tool to keep your bees alive. And that sounds bizarre, but, uh, but it's true. Um, Lisa, did Mark come? George Barnes? George, that's right. George Barnes? Oh, yeah, here. Please, here. Present. Okay. Come up front. Oh, all right. <laughs> there in the back. George Hi. Barnes. This is Lady Simone. Lady Simone, this George is Barnes. George Barnes. Ah. <laughs> All right. Okay, because I want to, yeah, I have a seat. I'm not quite to you. Oh, okay. But, but I want to hear about your, your, um, your app. Because it's. Right well, now, because I, I can show you some stuff. In just a minute. Okay. In just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know when you're ready. The gun. Hold on, she has another 30 minutes to tell you to hold on. <laughs> <laughs> How many of those minutes do I get to go back there and kick him for a while? <laughs> Take him off. I can do that. You're closer. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kick harder. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so what's available? How do you keep records? What do you do? Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. George is going to tell us about an app that he has. There are digital ways of doing it. You can write stuff down, hard copy. Um, it, and it doesn't matter how you do it. You need to pick something that works for you, okay? And you need to decide what it is that you want to track and track those things. Um, it's probably just as important to spend time thinking about your record-keeping system before you actually invest any time or money in doing it. Um, So that's a very simple system. And for years, that's what I use. That's you know just one of those composition books that you get at Walmart. <laughs> uh, works fine. And I would write down by the date, you know, the hive number, what I saw, and um, I come back. So that works. Problems with it. Um, <laughs> It's hard, you know, if you're looking for specific data or a particular date, it's hard to pull it out of there. You gotta go back and look through all the pages. Um, if it rains and you forgot and left it on top of a hive in the bee yard, you should. <laughs> it can be very bad. Um, if you have a lot of hives, okay, it's easier if you've only got, you know, three or four. If you have a hundred or more, that becomes quite cumbersome. Um, what's good about it, very economical. Um, I don't know what those composition books cost now, but probably five bucks, maybe. If you only have a few number of new lives, it's great. Um, easy to pick up, very portable. So. I'd argue an app is even more economical. What? An app is even more economical. It Cheaper is. Cheaper than a book. Cheaper than a book, there you go. Okay, we're going to talk about the same. He's right there. I know, I know. And he gets that price. What, what, Okay, so you can create a custom paper and pencil system. Or paper, yeah, paper and pen. Or pencil, uh, which is what I did because. Um, a lot of my yards are in remote locations where there is no access to Wi-Fi. Um, 
and um, and I get covered in propolis and honey and stuff and don't want to put that on, you know, a digital device. Um, but um, anyway, you, you, you can do what you want. So simple record keeping systems are great, um, but the thing, whatever it is that you do, your records are gonna be individual for your operation. So if you're raising queens, what you're gonna wanna track is different from somebody who is producing honey. And that's different from someone who is doing pollination. Um, so that's what you have to think about. What do you want to track? Then there's digital systems, okay? Which Justin has pointed out, yes, okay, you can very easily sort and manipulate data, you, you know, um, and uh, if you're a good typist, you can take notes quite quickly, you can back everything up, so if you leave it out in the rain, um, you know, it won't be totally lost, hopefully you back it up to the cloud, and uh, you don't have to buy any more notebooks <laughs> because you've got gigabytes of space, right? Tons and tons of space. Um, of course, these things like this and these um, tablets are not inexpensive, um, or phones, I assume, you can do it on a phone too. Um, you usually need an internet connection, and that, that's one problem for me. Um, propolis and honey on your hands are not generally good for um, digital equipment. So, and some of these things, I've had people like take notes in the field and then go home and transcribe them to a computer, which to my mind is nuts. You know, if I'm gonna write something down, I just wanna write it down once and have it available to you. Um, but some people do that. What's Man, propolis? What? Propolis. 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 Propolis is a resin that bees gather from trees and they use it to glue everything together. They coat the inside of a oh, okay. hive with it. It's really sticky. It's all sticky in the warm weather and it gets brittle in cold weather and it is an external immune system. It kills germs, kills viruses, bacteria, and fungi. It's good stuff. So, George is going to tell us about his app. I am? I'm ready? Yes, you are. Right. Okay. Okay. These are some, and. Alright, so. You're going to tell us. Couple notes. Put the light on. Please. <laughs> what? You want to see him? So, a couple notes on uh, record keeping in general. And I am completely unprepared for this meeting because I got the call like two hours ago. Thanks, Lisa. Yes. But, here's the thing. I've struggled with record keeping since the beginning of record keeping. A couple big stumbling blocks are able to track colonies over time. Simply. That's always been difficult. It's like, how did this colony do three weeks ago? How did it do yesterday? When am I taking the, the medication out of the hive? When does that do? That's struggle number one. Struggle number two, in general, I suck at record keeping. I just did. That's fine. I'm just not good at it. I don't have the right information, and I couldn't get a consistent data set of observations across multiple inspections. The third thing, and the most important thing, when it comes to mentors or other people, it's very difficult to send somebody what the inspection report looks like, especially from an historic perspective. I call John God, I'm like, hey John, I got, I don't know, whatever, I got the, my laying patterns from He's like, oh, well, what did it do for the last three inspections? Oh, impossible to answer the question. So, my idea, and I, I own a, uh, a production company, a digital production company. I have an engineering team, I've got coders and all that stuff. So, I, and I've made other apps before. I'm experienced in making apps, I'm experienced in technology. So, I built an iOS version for me because I was just super frustrated with it. And uh, so what is that the HDMI connection on this? Yeah. All right, so I can show you, I can give you a couple quick, couple quick examples of some of the things that I did to kind of like compensate 
You got a you got a thing for an iPhone? Uh, a lightning to HDMI? Nope. I need USB C to HDMI. Alright. So, yeah. so everybody has a phone, I would imagine, right? So let's see if this thing will actually take the connection. You see anything? No. I don't know if this connection is going to work. Setting up the yeah, go. Great. So, with the help of other people like yourselves, I kind of pulled what are the most important things to observe <coughs> in record keeping. And I'm like, okay, so here's a hive. I'm in this hive, hive one. And I say, okay. So, That's sorry. My problem with phones too. So, was the hive condition normal? Yeah, it was normal. Saw the queen, the queen's not marked, doesn't matter. Saw some eggs, saw some pupa, saw some hive beetles. Didn't, uh, didn't do a mite wash, or maybe we do mite wash. Nah, let's not do a mite wash. That's it. Okay, the next thing. This is important. What's an important thing for the hive? How's it behaving? It's calm. The population, this is a strong hive, so we'll make that heavy. We've got a couple, say we've got uh, five frames of uh, uniform laying. It smelled nice. The brood and the honey and the pollen are moderate. How many frames of bees did we see? I don't know. We saw 12 frames of bees. We saw five frames of brood. We saw five frames of honey. We got Three supers on. Done. That's a small colony. All right. So yeah, it's a small colony. So we're going to feed the hives. No, we got the supers on. We don't remove the medication because the supers are on. And that's it. Additional note looks good. <laughs> uh, looks good. Looks good. Done. Send report. Report is done. That's it, you're done. You just did the entire inspection. So, what does that mean? It means instead of writing the notes, I mean, maybe you guys can take notes that fast. I can't, for sure. But that's not, that's not the main functionality of it. The main functionality of it. What's the name of it? Uh, uh, Hive Inspector. Okay. So the main functionality, what do you see got the USB-C? Yes, I do have a USB-C adapter. I think this one might work. I never plugged the USB-C into this computer to the inside. You have to that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, so anyway. So now, next, next. Send report. Okay. So when you send a report. Oh. oh, so if you want to add a hive, this is also something that's important. This is the first thing that you get to do. Set up a hive. What are you going to call a hive? You call it anything. The name, we're going to call it hive, but I don't know. The location is a uh, um, backyard. Now, this is another thing that's important. It's like, when did I build the hive? Today's name is the default, but what was the origin? Was it a new? You build it from scratch, it was split. This is information that I find valuable to my own record keeping. However, when you actually log into the website, oh, and it's, it is cloud-based, so you don't have to do any backups, you don't have to send it anywhere, it can send a report to your email, and it populates on the back edge, on the back end of the site, something that looks like this. So this was the lower right, and now you can see, was the condition normal? Didn't see the queen, mark the queen, which this tells me, hey, I haven't seen the queen in a while. You saw eggs. I saw eggs. So it doesn't really matter, right. but I didn't see them. Um, I have another, another, um, another column here. I don't know how this projector thing. Can you get it to send you the report when you're back on Wi-Fi? Yeah, so you can send the report 
But what else I did is I color coded it. So it's like you can see in a second, okay, look, sometimes yes is good. You see drone cells? Yeah, I saw a couple. So the larva, yeah, it's green, it's good. Ah, I saw a high beam. Shit. So I'll wax them. You can see immediately that there's a problem with it. Um, okay, here all of a sudden, well, okay, they're a little nervous. Why? You can go back and you can look at the history of the hive in an instant to see what the behavior has been over time. Maybe you can do that with paper records. I was never able to do it. So, what are you going to do about the beetles? What? What are you going to do about the beetles? So, the beetles. I made a TikTok video about what I'm doing about the beetles on Sunday. We've got 25,000 views so far. So I have a, an answer for you, I'll tell you in a second. But, so this, on this digest, if you're someone that weighs your supers, you can track your super weight over time because one of the things that I found, it's like, I was doing this for fun on another one of my lives, it's like, okay, sometimes during the dearth, the weight of the super will actually go down because the bees are eating the honey. Well, I don't, that's not fun for me. So as soon as I see that weight drop, then I'm going to extract it. I don't know. It's probably wrong, but that's the way I do it. Um, the other thing, you put the medic, oh, sorry, this was just a default while I was developing an app. So when you put the medication in hive, it will automatically send you a notification when it's time to take the medication out, which normally isn't a big deal, but you have six or eight or 10 hives, you know, I don't want to have to go back to look at my calendar 45 days worth of inspections for Hive 6 to know when it's time to take the medication out. I get a pop-up on my phone, it says take the Apivar out of Hive 6. Done. The other thing is, so this is what everything looks like. You can export this into an Excel sheet, you can print it, you can send the report to an email or to your mentor or to, I don't know, to your USDA guys who well, wants to look at it. <laughs> um, Get them more information. <laughs> yeah, but what happens is you can, you're now sending all of the data, all of the research from all of, all, from this hive, from when you started doing it. So someone can really look at the cross, at, at the entire big picture, and see the history of what's been going on in that hive. So, the strength is the data management and the ability to access and share the data to other people, to other beekeepers. It's a brand new app. The Android version just got released today in beta. Jeez. So yeah, it's new. It's really new. It's really new. The, so. the Apple uh, version is out on the, on the App Store now and I've got like probably 400 users already on it. Um, so and George, you were at the fall meeting introducing this. Yeah, I was at the fall meeting. Right, that was the that was it came out like the, the day before that. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's all what, people have to do, thank you, George, thanks. is go on the App Store or Google Play if you have an Android or Google Play Play Store. Right, I'm not an Android guy. Any Android people here? Yeah, you're right. Play Store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so Play Store. I, I don't think it's on Play Just Store yet. Get my slides back for me, please. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Somebody get my slides back. Oh, okay. were there any questions? No, no, I have a paper pencil. And it's time to inspect for you, correct? Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, wait, sorry. Sorry, I do have one other thing. So, yeah, it's, it's Hive Inspector. Um, so, oh, this yeah. is the app itself, but if you go to just the site, there's also an interface where you can do it on your laptop. If you're not an iPhone guy and you are somebody that wants to do your records and prefer to work on a computer, once you're subscribed, it gives you a back-end dashboard so you can add all the information. Uh, let me see. Give me one second, let me see if this actually going to work. So are you doing this for free for us? 
So it is free right now. I am testing it. I got probably thirty-five, forty thousand dollars in it so far, so it won't Jeez. be free forever. <laughs> uh, but it is free until it actually works, and then I'm going to just try and get my money back, and then see how much it costs to maintain, and then I'll adjust the price accordingly. The objective is not to make any money, but definitely not to lose any money. So. Well, I charge for better testing. We could get to that. <laughs> we could um, sell commercial space on the. No, nah, I hate advertising. <laughs> um, however, though, I do have some other uh, some other corporate sponsors that just want to sponsor for carbon carbon credit offset and things like that. So yes. I am thinking about doing that. But I anyway, so yeah, you can do it on on your laptop or desktop or whatever, and all of the data gets combined automatically. You can put some in on your laptop, you can put some in on your phone, Android or Apple, it goes to your account and it all gets gathered up there. And melted. And melted. Want to be on our new t-shirts? What? Want to be on our new t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> what does it do? Uh, well, why not? <laughs> That's good. T-shirt? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You could be not cute, you don't need me. Well, I'm plugging in. Yeah. Okay. Here we go, man. Sure. All right. So anyway, if you have any questions, that's my that's my story. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Yeah. So it's real quick. Will you will you give us some contact information if we want to contact you? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It'll cost you thirty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> We got money in the bank. So okay. the second time will be free. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can we get you from the website? What Hot website? Inspector? I don't know, probably. If there's a thing well, that's it's on it. Yeah, I didn't really yeah. I, well, I guess I guess I didn't really do it. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I can. Okay. So yeah, do you have this score I've got to put on? Or do you want to do something to the uh, world? <laughs> Oh wait, I have a thing that you guys can actually the thing. Thing is quite right. Watch this. So I gotta take the side here and put that out. It should be great. See look. I have I have my my little stand. Okay. You guys can take a picture of it. Look at that. Watch this. Oh my god. Picture of that if you're a, an Apple person, and um, or I can just give you my phone number if you want and you can call me. Okay. So. Excellent. There you have it. Thank you. Thank you. For excellent, excellent. Can you uh, can I give a request for your app? What? Can you add a box so we can scribble? You can have the notes. No, there is very nice. I just want to scribble. Do you have a? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the papers for. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's. I'm gonna finish up because there's actually some other stuff we want to cover. But um, these are things that I've seen. Some of the digital apps tracking. Okay. What what size equipment you're using? Is it ten frame or eight frame? Um. What George just mentioned. Uh, did you see queen? Did you see the eggs? Cat food, larvae, queen cells. The temperament of the hive. That's kind of important. Population, odor, um, condition of your equipment, is there a race comb, too much propolis, dead bees, moisture mold, foundation type, foundation type, weather, how much equipment is on the bees at any given time, and so on and so forth. Okay, so there's all kinds of things you can track. Um, there's a lot of different forms you can print out. Uh, you know, some are extremely detailed. You know, some kind of require you to, to put down how many boxes of what size are on the bees, how many how many frames of pollen, how many frames of brood, all this. So, but but the real question is, what do you want to record? What's important? I'm going to tell you, there are four things that you need to track, and this probably isn't on the slide. There are only four things that you ever need to keep track of 
in your bees? One, are they queen white? Okay. You don't have to see the queen. You see eggs, you know they're queen white, -like, and if the brood pattern is decent, they've got a decent queen. Okay. Two, are they healthy? Varroa falls under health. Are there any brood diseases that you're observing? Okay. What other things contribute to their health? Okay. Is, are you, this is almost a negative thing. Okay. You're not going to make a note in there unless you're observing a disease or some other condition that is a problem health-wise. Three, how strong are they? How many frames of bees are there? Okay. If you're running deeps, how many frames, how many deep frames are covered in bees? Count them every time you do an inspection. I do all mediums. I do nine frames per box. So for me, a hive in the brood nest, and if it's a triple medium that is totally full of bees and extremely strong, it's going to have 27 frames covered in bees. And I'll write that down. And the last thing um, is food. Are the food reserves that they have appropriate for the season? Going to be different in April than in October. Okay. How are they doing as far as food goes? Four things. That's all you ever really need to know about your bees. But those four things are critical. Okay. You got to be tracking those. So I'm going to share with you what my record keeping system is. It's not nearly as fancy as George's marvelous um, new app. Uh, but if you're old fashioned, you know, and have a lot of propolis on your fingers, something similar to this might work for you. Uh, and all I want to show you is how this does fulfill that requirement of looking at those four things strength, queen, health, and food. Those four things. So I got about 100 colonies, multiple apiaries. Um, some of them get farmland assessment because of the income from my bees. Um, but uh, but that's you know that's the operation. So first thing I ask myself is what do I not want to record? Some of these various things have so much detail in them, and I don't care. You know I don't care about <laughs> race call. I don't care if there's ants in the hive. You know, ants don't do anything. I don't care about the equipment, actually. Um, if I need to replace equipment, I will replace equipment. Um, it, I have an action list, okay? Bring a, bring a bottom board to 3J. Um, I don't care if there's pollen on frame two or three, or cat brood on frame four, five, six. I just want to make sure that they have enough pollen and they have enough brood. So I won't necessarily record the number of each. What I do want to record, health, strength, food, queen rightness, swarm management in spring. Okay, am I observing swarm cells? What am I doing about it? Um, honey production, you know, how many supers of honey do this hive produce? Did I need to, did I add another honey super? Uh, its location, the action list, what does it need? Um, I have something for the apiary, overall apiary, where there might be, you know, 20, 30 hives, um, and whatever else I might want to record. So I had to make a decision that I want handwritten or digital, and because I didn't have Wi-Fi in the yards, and because, you know, I'm, I'm basically I'm a commercial beekeeper. I'm not migratory, but I do this for a living. So um, I didn't want to mess around with having a tablet or a laptop out in the field. And I did my own thing, which is the book, okay? Um, it's got tabs for each apiary. Um, it's a three ring binder. It's got a zipper so I can close it up. And I have actually left it out in the rain once or twice. And it, it manages to survive. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> I was able, you know, blow dryer. I could blow some of the um, wettest sheets of paper dry, but, but it was okay. 
Um, so I've got compartments, I have extra forms, I have my reading glasses because I can no longer see eggs without putting the reading glasses on, which is really annoying, getting too old. Um, I have a flashlight in case it's a cloudy day and I want to see eggs, I put the reading glasses on and I put the flashlight, I can look in the cell, you know, um, and see eggs if it's too cloudy. Uh, pens, magic markers, um, I've got a tab section for each apiary, so all of the hives in a particular apiary are under one tab. Um, and in front, I've got an apiary notes form for each apiary, which tracks things like, um, did I read whack? Did I put, uh, did I bake my electric fences with bacon? Um, you know, things that apply overall to the apiary that I don't want to necessarily put down, you know, for each hive. Am I observing the nectar flow? Am I seeing these, that these bees are on a flow at this location? <coughs> so, that type of stuff. Um, and this is, this is my basic form, okay? For, so each colony, each hive, will get this form. And it tracks everything that I need to track. What George mentioned about the, um, how the colony got started, I have to ask the ball. Okay. Um, the date, where did the queen come from? Is it one of my own queens? Did I buy it? Where did I get it? You know, um, I, I don't really buy, um, pretty much at this point everything is my own. But, um, you know, if I bought a package or a nuke or whatever, I can put down and the date. And if I requeened, okay, did they requeen themselves? Do I have a supersedure queen in there? Um, you know, or did I actually replace the queen? Did I buy a queen from John Bob? Which occasionally I will do. So, and then up at the top you'll see four columns. Fed, mites, honey, and LOC, which stands for location. So, fed could be SS for sugar syrup, F for fondant. Um, and I'll put down, for instance, if I give them sugar, I might put three gallons. You know, I might put HTF for high top feeder. Um, mites, mites can have a number M equal five if I did an alcohol wash, and I got five mites in my alcohol wash. Okay, or it could be FP standing for Formic Pro. I treated them on a particular day with Formic Pro. Um, so anything having to do with mites goes in that column. What's that say? Honey. Okay. Honey means I pulled honey supers. So that's going to be, it's going to have a notation like 2M. What the heck was that? My column. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I thought, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So 2M means I pulled two mediums on a particular day of honey. So I'll always have a record of how much honey this particular hive produced. And LOC, I'll tell you about that in a sec. So, so that's what it looks like, and you cannot, you are not gonna be able to understand this, but like this last thing here says on 325, okay, of the year, it looks like, what is that year? Okay, you can read it. 2022. 2022, okay. I have 23F, B plus B, um, good H, EXC, BP, REV. Okay, so that means I have 23 frames of bees and brood with good honey, stores were adequate, an excellent brood pattern, and I reversed. I did my early swarm management and reversed brood boxes on that hive. So it's kind of a shorthand that I have developed. <laughs> That's the translation, <laughs> okay? Um, you're not gonna understand this, but I do, okay? Alive, honey, okay. Nine to 10 frames, bees and brood, lots of honey. Only about one and a half boxes, bees and brood, reversed. Over there, see, oxalic acid vaporization was done on 227. Um, I put in two <laughs> apple bar strips on 310. Took out the apple bar, okay? That's where the minus is. Um, 
Have you had any surgeries on there lately in this past <laughs> lifetime? Is that on there too? Get out of here. <laughs> well, there's no way. Any heart conditions? <laughs> Lambie, what is no E? What is what? No E on 521. 521. Oh, no eggs. Okay. Okay. They formed multiple queen cells, multiple emerged queen cells. Okay. No eggs. Honey superantic, but has three mediums of bees. I left it as it was. I didn't do anything with it. Um, so. I use abbreviations, obviously. Otherwise, I would be there forever. Okay, but I have my system of abbreviations. I know what they mean. You would, if you did a handwritten thing, you would develop your own system of, of abbreviations. With George's app, you don't have to. You're like clicking a button. Yes, you're not. So there's that. So those are the four things: queen status, food stores, health, and strength. Four critical things you should be recording at every inspection. Um, yes. And I told you what those means. Yeah. QR, I use that a lot. QR, queen right. Means I've got a queen, I know I've got a queen, I like the brood pattern. So QR tells me everything I need to know about that queen. Um, <laughs> I do this too. So you have a lot of hives. It's nice to have a short end where I can look out over the apiary and at a glance see more or less what's going on. So when the bricks are facing forward, it means that everything's fine in that hive. Okay. If <laughs> Everything's not fine, but I'm not specifying what the problem is. I put the brick at a 45 degree angle. Something's going on there. I have to look at the notes to see what it is. Okay? If the brick is standing up on end, it means there's a queen issue. And if the brick is like that, it means they're dead. So people come and work bees with me, and they don't know about the bricks, and they put the brick like that. It's like I'm, I'm almost superstitious. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no so that doesn't really kill the bees, though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't bring all these bees. You don't. You don't. You don't. I think we should all go to Landy's bee yards and turn the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> April 1st, April 1st. Yeah, kick him, kick him. <laughs> yeah. They are Landy, don't you do the empty hives open? No, 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 I'll take, if, if I have a den out, I'll take the supers of the den out, den outs and distribute them above the inner covers of strong colonies. Okay. Um, unless it's like in the middle of the winter, but I don't get den outs in the middle of the winter. Okay, location, so that last column that says location, every once in a while I need to pick up a hive and bring it someplace else. I don't do this very often. This is something more, um, you know, migratory beekeepers are going to do this more often than I do. But the hive has a number, okay, and the location has a number. So if I pick up the hive, hive number 56, and take it to another yard, maybe I want to take advantage of a really strong basswood flow, you know, or locust flow in another location. So I'm going to move half a dozen hives over someplace else. Okay, I pick up hive number 56 and I take it over to the 3J yard for the locust flow and I put it down on a different hive stand that has a number. Okay, so all I have to do is take hive number 56's piece of paper out of the tab for wherever it was and put it in the new one, the new location under the right tab. So there's that flexibility. Apiary record, okay. Date, notes. So this may say something like weed whacked, or um, baited electric fence, or changed battery in fencer. Um, things that you know I'm not going to put for every single um, hive, but I want to make a note of. Okay, yeah, fencer needs a fresh battery in the green, but not all the way over. Okay, what's this? Have two foundation supers here could take. 
Well, this was at a uh, doctor's office, and uh, on 519, I got a call, nurse call, reporting swarm weaving. So, you know, sales from one of the area record. Hey, can you go back to that? <laughs> George is really? Yeah, no, I got a question because it seems like are the dates on the left hand column so you actually didn't make a note from 617 to 97? These are APR records. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So you didn't. Let's see, 617. Like the third, is that is that the frequency that you actually make notes? <laughs> so if I don't have anything to know about the APR overall, yeah. I just put something down and I have something to say. Why do you need an electric fence? There's. 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 You need an electric fence. Keep your neighbors out. Mm. Keep your yeah. grand out. <laughs> we have bears, a lot of them, and they will eventually take down your bees if you do not have an electric fence in northern New Jersey, and a good part of southern New Jersey, too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and the action list. Okay. I need to do something, so... Um, <laughs> What's that say? Right, okay, so 624 at the low, okay, this is in front of the whole book. So the apiary, okay, 624, I need this by uh, the 8th of July in the Ford apiary, uh, check BF4 in two weeks for eggs. So there must have been a clean issue there. And this, you know, George has this digitally where you get a reminder to take out the medication. Um, on a certain day. Mm -hmm. So I have to have it, um, you know, in hard copy form. That can we get it? <laughs> <laughs> Approval. One more thing, and most of you are not going to need this, okay? But I need it because, as I said, I have to track how much honey is produced in a particular yard because I need to send a letter to my landlord at the end of every year so that they can get farmland assessment. And that's my, my ER, okay, my extracting room. And right over there, okay, behind the counter, this clipboard is where I keep track of honey production. So I've just started this one. And each one of those hash marks uh, represents a 60 pound bucket of honey. So by the time I'm done, um, I had as many as 100 hash marks um, in a good year when I had 150 hives. Um, these days it's you know, usually around 40 or 50. But I have, you know, I track the type of honey because some of them are different prices um, and uh, which yarn it's from. And, the totals at the end of the season. Yes. So, I don't care how you keep records. Don't make any difference how you keep records. You know, George sounds like he's got a great system. Um, or make your own the way I did. Um, but just do it. <laughs> Decide what you want to track and do it. Um, you know, so you don't forget important things. You might be able to identify problems. Um, you know, if you, if you know that your bee swarmed on a certain date or within a certain range of dates, you can then calculate when you should expect to see eggs. Not be guessing, but actually calculate it. You know how, you know, you know that they, they typically swarm as soon as they've capped the first cells. Okay, no. it's about another week. It's actually five and a half days before the queens, virgin queens emerge. Then they've got to fly to May, might be as long as three weeks after that. You can figure it out to within a couple of days. Okay, especially if you actually know when they swarm. So then you don't go calling up John Bott or me <laughs> saying, I think I need a queen. I might, I'm queenless, I'm queenless, when your bees swarmed a week before and the virgins are just coming out. Um, more good stuff, yes. So Dexter really wants to eat. You can see Dexter's a really big boy. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, now you can eat. And yeah, my cat actually likes kale. <laughs> That's tougher. He's the wise ass, and he likes kale. Okay.